Salam Perpaduan and good evening. You're watching News at 10 with me, Nur Zamri. Making the headlines tonight, leaders urge to put country's interests above self. MOH to focus on improving hospitals' health facilities. Leaders who have been given the mandate by the people must possess sincerity to serve and put the interests of the country above their own. Young Debaton Basar of Negri Sumbilan, Tuanku Mukhris of Mial Marhum, Tuanku Munawar said this was because the continuous conflict and narrow political culture only show Malaysia as a country which is unstable and fragile. Although there are differences in ideologies and agenda among the people, he was sure that there are similarities, especially in the agenda for development and people's welfare to establish a more prosperous country. He said this at the state investor ceremony held in conjunction with his 75th birthday celebration at the Balurong Sri Istana Basar Sri Mananti today. Tuanku Mukhris also called on leaders to defend, protect and implement the principles of the Rukunagara in addition to paying attention to the principles of the supremacy of this constitution and the rules of law which are closely related to the concept of separation of powers. He said the separation of powers must continue to exist so that responsibilities can be executed without any interference and disturbance, thus avoiding any form of abuse of power and ensuring justice for all parties. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim will hold a team retreat with Cabinet Ministers tomorrow. Minister of Communications and Digital Fahmi Fazil said the retreat, which would be held at an undisclosed occasion, was to discuss the future direction of the government and to set the key performance in the cages KPI for each ministry. He said the retreat is timely, as in the course of the last few months, the ministers have familiarised themselves with their ministries. Ini adalah pemukiman yang bagi saya tepat pada masanya kerana ramai menteri yang telah mengambil masa sebulan-sebulan setengah untuk memahami agensi, ada yang telah mula lawatan ke negeri-negeri macam saya semalam di Kelantan sempat bertemu dengan warga Kementerian Komunikasi dan Digital di peringkat negeri Kelantan. Jadi kita ada serba sedikit pemahaman dan kita akan selepas ini menentukan hala tuju bagi setiap kementerian juga kerajaan perpaduan itu sendiri. He was made after presenting New Year contributions to the Chinese community in Lembah Pantai Parliamentary Constituency. Earlier, Datuk Sri Anwar reportedly said that a special retreat will be held for cabinet ministers to set the KPIs for each ministry and get input on their performance after about a month's work. A majority of delegates at the UMNO General Assembly today supported the motion of no contests for the post of President and Deputy President at the party polls this year. UMNO Secretary General Datuk Sri Ahmad Maslan said that in the voting, which was carried out at 4.52 p.m. at Dewan Merdeka, WTC Kuala Lumpur, a majority of the delegates stood up and raised their hands supporting the notion. Meanwhile, AMNO Information Chief Isham Jalil in a posting on Facebook confirmed that all motions brought by all divisions, including an additional motion for the post of President and Deputy President in this year's party polls to remain unchallenged, were supported by almost all delegates present at the Assembly. The additional motion calling for the posts for Party President and Deputy President not to be contested in the upcoming AMNO election was proposed by Negeri Sumbilan delegate Muhammad Shukri Samsudin yesterday. The AMNO election must be held before 19th of May, which is six months after the date of the 15th general election. While Pakatan Harapan has accepted Barisan Nasional at the federal level, negotiations between both coalitions for the upcoming state elections have not begun. 
PKR's Rafizi Robli disclosed today that any cooperation at the state level depends on current developments within the party. Keputusan PR 2015 yang lepas, kita convert ya. Kita combine, ambil undi PH, campur undi BN. Sebenarnya PH dan BN combine menang 53 kursi di Islam. Um, but of course, dia kita kena tengok macam mana sentimen, sentimen rakyat dalam 6 bulan akan datang. Um, dia ada isu transferability of vote, sama ada yang dulu undi BN itu akan undi PH tidak, ataupun yang undi PH itu Ayuh akan undi BN. undi BN ke tidak kan. Jadi yang itu yang kita ada masa yang mencukupi sebenarnya untuk 4-5 bulan ini untuk kita mengetahui keadaan itu di samping berkempen, di samping memastikan pelaksanaan beberapa perkara di Pekat Persekutuan, di Selangor. Rafizi was made at the Selangor PKR convention today. He added that regardless of what transpires at AMNO, PH will continue its preparations to ensure that it will retain all three states it currently helms, namely Pulau Pinang, Selangor and Negeri Sembilan. The mandates for six states in Malaysia will expire this year. Apart from the three mentioned, the remainder are Kedah, Kelantan and Terengganu control bypass, which is now a component party of the Perikatan Nasional Coalition. No spike in COVID-19 cases is expected during the upcoming Chinese New Year celebrations. Health Minister Dr. Zaliha Mustafa said the number of COVID-19 cases was also on a downward trend, with fewer than 500 new cases reported daily. She said the ministry is closely monitoring the COVID-19 situation and have previous experience handling cases during festive seasons, such as during Hari Raya Adil Fitri and Hari Raya Haji, including the recent general election. Walaupun pada kali ini kita menjangkakan kemungkinan tidak ada kenaikan kes tetapi kita tetap berhati-hati dalam dan langkah berjaga-jaga itu sentiasa kita kita laksanakan dan kita akan pantau seperti yang saya sebutlah dengan dengan rapatlah kita ada eh, yang saya pernah sebut juga dulu CPRC laporan daripada daripada negeri semua kita dapat pantau hari demi hari dan dan dalam dalam keadaan yang sangat sangat apa ni berhati-hatilah ya yeah. She added the ministry has also requested help from the Immigration Department to monitor all the entry points into the country. Dr Zaliha, however, stressed that members of the public should be complacent and continue to take precautions and protect themselves from any risks. In another development, Dr Zaliha said the ministry will focus on improving hospitals and facilities at all MOH health centres nationwide. She said at present, the ministry has no plans to build new public hospitals but to just complete what was already under construction. She said that the ministry will, however, focus on making improvements and upgrading the facilities at existing hospitals and health centres nationwide, including in Sabah and Sarawak. Dan kita harap bajet yang akan diberikan itu nanti akan uh, membantu kita ha, untuk membuat uh, dua perkara tersebut di mana uh, kita uh, melihat perkara-perkara yang uh, menjadi prioriti kita insyaAllah. Uh, dan itu akan diputuskan bersama dengan kementerian uh, de, uh, ber bergantung kepada keputusan uh, uh, di uh, parlimen nanti insyaAllah. The revised budget 2023 is expected to be tabled in parlimen on 24th of February. There will be a six-month delay in the issuance of MyKid for newborns in this country. Following the global microchip shortage caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, National Registration Department, JPN Director General Dr. Ruslan Juso, however, said parents can still submit new applications but have to wait a little longer because JPN will process the application in stages according to their respective then. Dr. Ruslin said parents can also use their birth certificate for the daily affairs of their children who are yet to receive their MyKid because it is valid and this vacation document is issued by the government. He also urged all government and private agencies to accept birth certificates for any business involving children as it is the only document recognised in important matters such as applications for school admission. Earlier, the JPN Director General presented my card to a disabled girl, Nur Aliyah Amar, 12, 
through the department's Menyumai Kasih Rakyat Meka program in Bukit Kode, Semabuk Dalam, with Malake and RD Director Nur Aziz Sulaiman also present. Commenting on the Meka program, he said the outreach program for the issuance of identity documents such as My Card and birth certificates for persons with disabilities, the elderly, bedridden patients, and residents in remote areas had seen a positive impact since it was introduced in 2013. Still to come, all markets to be developed as national heritage markets. Stay tuned. Hello, there's been a motorcycle accident here. Maybe an elephant ran it over? <laughs> Sir, there is fire accident at the address number 5 Jalan Timbika, Shah Alam. PGO from FRT, Shah Alam, there was no fire accident here. Over. Nurse 999. Use it wisely. The local government development ministry, KPKT, plans to develop all public markets into tourism products by turning them into heritage markets. As Minister Nga Koming said, towards this end, the ministry would identify all dilapidated markets to preserve their structure and architecture. Jabatan Kerajaan Tempatan, kita ada, sudah ada rancangan. So, saya akan umum pada masa yang sesuai untuk pastikan yang paling penting kita jaga kebajikan dan kesejahteraan rakyat. The minister also cited Taiping Public Market as an example, which is now a national heritage and the relevant work is currently in progress and it is hoped to be completed by next year in conjunction with its 150th anniversary. Nga said he would visit some of the markets with the potential to be developed as heritage markets, including the public market in Bukit Mertajam, Pulau Pinang, which was built in the mid-1960s. During his visit today, Nga announced an allocation of 1 million ring for the repair of Pasar Besar Ipo, which was built in 1959. The repair works will begin this year, and after that, the plan to upgrade the market will be discussed to turn it into an international standard market and a tourist attraction. The Digital Economic Centre, Pedi, is one of the most effective platforms to permit products produced by villages, especially in rural areas. Communications and Digital Deputy Minister Tio Niching said, through Pedi, they could promote the products to a wider market. Elaborating, Tio said Pedi can help educate and teach their villages about basic computer skills, e-commerce that's helping them to do business online, as there are classes to teach them how to promote their products. Jadi saya rasa ini memang selaras dengan uh, hala tuju dan juga hasrat KKD untuk lagi promosi ekonomi digital uh, supaya lebih banyak orang bolehlah bawa bisnes mereka dalam talian supaya lebih ramai orang boleh tahu produk-produk yang cukup istimewa di kampung-kampung uh, yang mungkinlah di kampung uh, di tempat yang pedalaman ataupun di uh, perkampungan. According to Tio, there are currently 911 PEDI in operation nationwide so far. The Deputy Minister also expressed happiness that PEDI is useful to the villages and added that the Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission, MCMC, will study to increase activities at PEDI. On the flood in Trangan recently, Tio said it affected four PEDI centres and efforts were being made to get them back in operation soon. On another note, Tio said almost 600 million ringgit in losses were recorded throughout 2022 as a result of cybercrime in the country. She said the data shows that the problem of cybercrime in this country is quite serious and the ministry will focus on educating the public to become more digitally literate and not becoming victims. Juga adalah bagaimana kita mendidik dan juga meningkatkan literasi digital supaya pengguna media sosial ini menjadi lebih celak digital. Dan saya rasa gembira kerana selepas masyarakat bersama dengan kita, mereka juga akan bantu untuklah menyampaikan agenda KKD ini. Jadi pada bulan Februari yang Mac ini, 
uh, syarikat ataupun uh, platform provider seperti TikTok juga akan lancarkan program seperti Stop for 3 Second. Kita cakap Stop for 3 Second kerana 3 Second itu akan bantu kami untuk fikir benarkah maklumat itu adalah sahih atau tidak sahih. The Deputy Minister said the three seconds here is to help the community to think first whether any information received is authentic or not. Tio also said that social media platform providers would also help promote the National Scam Response Centre's 997 hotline. She said that the 997 hotline, which is still little known by the community, is a government initiative to help victims of cybercrime to prevent losses. Thus far, the 997 hotline operates 12 hours daily and it is a one-stop centre comprising representatives from Bank Negara Malaysia, private banks, MCMC and the Royal Malaysia Police hold you their best to immediately stop the flow of victims' money. The strategic cooperation with Indonesia to fight the anti-palm oil lobby will be able to put pressure on the European Union, EU, Malaysian Palm Oil Board. MPOB Director General Dr. Ahmad Parviz Gulam Kader said the move may be one option that the world's two biggest palm oil producers granted undertake to fight the discrimination by the EU on palm oil following the new rules on deforestation by the trade bloc. Untuk membincangkan bagaimana kita melalui SIPOPSI, ya, Council of Palm Oil Producing Countries, mungkin kita akan cuba fikirkan sebagai dua negara pengeluar terbesar. Mungkin kita boleh melihat, bukan kita terus laksanakan, tapi memikirkan uh, apa nama ni kemungkinan-kemungkinan dan juga apa yang boleh kita laksanakan sebagai mungkin itu menjadi sedikit uh, kita apa ni. Um, cara untuk kita memberi sedikit tekanan lah kepada EU supaya mereka tidak sewenang-wenangnya lah me, 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 macam buli kita lah. Recently, Deputy Prime Minister and Plantation and Communities Minister Datuk Sri Fadilah Yusof said Malaysia may stop the exports of palm oil to EU and wants to focus on other countries. Hence, he will leave for Indonesia by February to meet his counterpart and other stakeholders to strategize and strengthen efforts to fight the negativity surrounding the commodity. Indonesia and Malaysia contribute almost 80% of the global palm oil production. Europe is the third largest importer of Malaysian palm oil oil, which accounts to 9.0% of total exports. According to the proposed deforestation regulations, commodities such as palm oil, which were grown or raised on land that was subjected to deforestation or forest degradation, will be banned from entering the EU market after the regulations are passed in the European Parliament. British Iranian Akbari executed on spy charge. That and coming up right after this. The number of malicious and false statements spread by SMS or social media platforms have become too widespread. The public is advised to be careful and not fall for such ploys and sharing or forwarding such messages. Remember that spreading fake news is an offence under Section 233 of the Communications and Multimedia Act 1998. This carries a penalty of a fine not exceeding 50,000 ringgit or up to one year imprisonment or both upon conviction. Thousands of workers rallied in Indonesia's capital today, urging parliament to reject a presidential decree that critics say would erode employees' rights and environmental protections. 
President Joko Widodo issued an emergency decree last month, replacing a controversial jobs law in Southeast Asia's largest economy, a move some legal experts say violated a court ruling. The Constitutional Court had ruled the 2020 jobs creation laws was flawed, saying there had been insufficient public consultation before the law was passed. It ordered lawmakers to complete a renewed process by November. The jobs creation law had been welcomed by foreign investors for cutting red tape. Last week, a group of Indonesians asked the Constitutional Court to carry out a judicial review of the regulation. Iran has executed British Iranian dual national Ali Reza Akbari after he was sentenced to death for spying for the United Kingdom during sharp condemnation from the British government. The judiciary's Mizan online website said Akbari, 61 years old, was hanged after being convicted of corruption on earth and harming the country's internal and external security by passing on intelligence. It did not say when or where the execution took place. Mizan Online said Akbari, who had been arrested more than two years ago, had been a spy for Britain's M16 Secret Intelligence Agency and had received around two million US dollars for his services. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak said he was appealed by the execution. Akbari was hanged only hours after the United States had joined its ally Britain in calling for Iran not to go ahead with the execution. Amnesty International called the execution abhorrent. Mizan Online citing the intelligence ministry said Akbari had become a key spy for Britain's M16 due to the importance of his position. Akbari, a veteran of the 1980-1988 Iran-Iraq war, was arrested sometime between March 2019 and March 2020. Two Palestinians were killed during an Israeli army raid in the occupied West Bank. Palestinian Health Ministry said the two young men were shot dead by Israeli forces during an assault on the village of Jaba, south of Jenin, in the north of the West Bank. No further details were provided on the circumstances surrounding the death. The Israeli army said in a brief statement that it had launched counter-terrorism activity near the village during which suspects shot live fire at them from a passing vehicle. The Palestinian health ministry named the two young men killed as Azadin Basim Harambra, 24, and Amjad Adnan Kalilia, 23. The latest death bring up to 12, the toll of the Palestinians killed this year during the violence in the West Bank occupied by Israel since 1967. Seven. Next in sports, Go Yulin pays tribute to Dad for success. The country's challenge in the 2023 Malaysia Open fizzled out when men's doubles duo Ong Yu Sin Chiu Yi crashed out of the quarterfinals. The L seeded pair succumbed to 21 14, 16 21, 17 21 defeat to Fajar Alfian Muhammad Rian Adrian of Indonesia at the Asiata Arena in a hard fought 75 minute encounter. Yusin Iyi, who are also world number seven, controlled the first set from the start and won 21 14. However, the Indonesians, who finished runners up to Takuro Hoki, Yugo Kobayashi last year, bounced back to prove their mettle as the world's top pair to secure victory. It was the Indonesian seventh win against the 2021 World Championships bronze medalists in the 10 matches between them. When met after the exit, Iyi and Yusin said despite the defeat, they were satisfied with their game and hoped to be more consistent in upcoming tournaments. Saya rasa uh, keseluruhan kita pun macam agresif juga lah. Walaupun kita mainnya macam defend, tapi itu part of the gameplay lah saya rasa. Then, uh, first set, 
jadi dan second set kita saya rasa kita lebih kena lebih konsisten lah next time yeah. sebab orang pun tak senang mesti lagi kan ya, second set dengan third set ni dia orang lebih sabar lah ya konsisten lebih bersabar sebab first game kita apa ni mungkin lebih defensif but macam you see cakap uh, kalah gameplay then uh, second set kita still using the same gameplay but they change ya yeah, dia orang tukar Former national mixed doubles player Goh Liu Ying said it was the unwavering support of her father, Goh Jia Wei, helped her share to excel in badminton in the international arena. Liu Ying said it was her father who first introduced her to badminton when she was just three years old, just to instill in her love for the sport. Liu Ying was melancholic. When met at her retirement ceremony, which was specially organized by the Badminton Association of Malaysia, BAM, at the Aziata Arena today, hailing from Alugaja Himalaga, the shuttler also said that her father did not expect to see her, the eldest of the three siblings, to be selected to play for the country and eventually win a silver medal at the 2016 Rio Olympics with her partner Chan Peng Soon. Shakui, however, said he was sad that his daughter would no longer see action in the courts, but at the same time was happy to know that she will no longer have to suffer due to injuries while playing the game after this. Itu memang saya sendiri daripada kecil memang suka main badminton. Tapi masa itu uh, keluarga memang masalah kewangan lah. Jadi nak beli reket pun tak mampu. Ya, judo saya main badminton pun pakai reket yang kayu tu, aeroplane. <laughs> main jadi sendiri tak dapat. Uh, jadi national player pun itu uh, saya harap lah dia boleh ganti babak jadi pemain national lah. Luying, who is one of the best mixed doubles players ever to play for the country, returned with Peng Soon for the Malaysia Open but lost in the first round on Tuesday. She announced her retirement as badminton player thereafter. In addition to the Olympic scheme silver medal, Luying also achieved various international successes, including the 2018 Commonwealth Browns, two Sea Games medals, the 2010 Asian Championship gold, the 2017 All England silver, and the 2018 Indonesian Open silver. Veteran Richard Gasquet fought back to stun cheerful Cameron Norrie in the Auckland Classic final today for his first ATP title in nearly five years. In a grueling match two days before the Australian Open, Frenchman Gasquet prevailed 4-6, 6-4, over the British world number 12. The Frenchman had a walkover in Friday's semi-final and looked slightly fresher than Nori, levelling the match before getting a decisive break for a 5-4 lead in the decider. Gasset then closed out the contest and served to win his first trophy since as head of Govan Boat. In 2018, disappointing home fans who had been hoping New Zealand race Nori would come out on top. 20-year tour veteran Gasket will improve his world ranking from 67 to somewhere inside the top 50 ahead of his opening match at the Australian Open against compatriot Hugo Humbert. And that wraps up news at 10 tonight. A reminder of our top story. Leaders urge to put countries' interests above self. Don't forget to join us again tomorrow at 12.30 in the afternoon on TV2 and Saluran Brita RTM. Till then, I'm Nuru Zamri. It's lights out for now. Good night.